we could look at uh, the duration of a bond. Uh, duration of bond is important, especially when we're considering how sensitive is a bond to change in interest rates. Um, so, for instance, um, we might consider the following. Uh, the use of the word duration as both the weighted average time until repayment and as a percentage change in price often causes confusion. Strictly speaking, Macaulay duration is the name given to weighted average time until cash flows are received and is measured in years. Modified duration is the name given to price sensitivity and as the price is the change in price for a unit change in yield. So we're going to look at uh, modified duration um, initially and estimate what is the effect of a change in an in a discount factor on the value of a bond. Okay, so uh, let's could um, set it out as the following. Let's say we had um, the duration of a five-year treasury bond with 10% semi-annual coupon paying selling at par. So we're going to assume that the bond has a face of, if we open this up a little bit, so down, open it up, and pause for a moment. Okay, so this is the estimation here set out. We'll just copy and paste. Okay, home, edit, paste. Okay, so basically, we're trying to work out, if you like, the duration of a five-year treasury bond with 10% semi-annual coupon selling at par. Okay, so the, the bond is selling at par, it means that the coupon rate and the discount rate are equal to 10%. Okay, so... This bond here, so it's um, a face of 1000. It has a power value of um, 1000. Because the bond pays a dividend semi annually, um, or a coupon semi annually, there is at 1 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and so on, all the way out to five years coupons are being paid and the coupon if you like the coupon payment that is occurring is occurring it's 50 because 10% uh, of 1000 is 100 because it's semi-annual we divide that 100 by 2 so we get 50 per annum for each year over the five year time span the discount factor is equal to, and I should write this in, is equal to 1 plus 0 0.1 divided by 2 to the power of um, negative five, uh, 6 months. Okay, let me pull this down. And so here, same thing again. We're saying 1 plus the rate of interest divided by 2 to the power of, and of course I forgot to multiply by, multiply by uh, 2 as well. Okay, so we get 0 0.952 all the way down. And so, if you like, what this formula 
the discount factor, if you like, is 1 plus the rate of interest divided by m to the power of negative the time period involved by m. And because we're discounting, it's a negative power. So basically, 1 plus the rate of interest divided by m is equal to 2, uh, the time period being six months multiplied again by m2 gives us the discount factor and that applies all the way down to get the present value of the instrument we just multiply equal to zero point five zero point nine five two multiplied by the time period involved uh, sorry, multiplied by, so we do that again, it's equal to the discount factor multiplied by the cash amount. Okay, and we're getting the same results here. Okay, and because it's a power instrument, because the coupon rate is equal to the discount rate, when we take the sum of these cash flows, so equal to sum, It should be a thousand, which it's equal to, because it's a, it's a, a power bond. And then to estimate the duration, it's the same again, but we multiply each of these by the corresponding time period. So this value here multiplied by cor its corresponding time period gives us the denominator and if we sum this value sum these values we get 4053 and the duration of this bond is the bond price divided into the product of the present value of the cash flows multiplied by the respective time period so whereas this column here represents the present value of the cash flows where a coupon has been where a coupon of 50 has been discounted at 10% when the discount rate is 10% so discounting at 10% when the coupon is 10% okay present value of the cash flow 47 69 61 multiplied by the time period right and again likewise and when we pull this these down right each of these discounted cash flows get multiplied by the discounted by the by the, the respective time period so essentially what we're doing is we're going to take the sum of these and divided by the sum of these. So the sum of this column gets divided by the sum of this column here, and that gives us the duration measure. Okay, so we can verify that here. The face, let's take this and set up in terms of what we had before and just verify. So let's insert, insert a column and I'm going to pull all this back and then I'm going to use present value of PVB we have the function PVBM and it's a thousand and ten ninety so that's correct now let's change See, can be verified the result here. What if the coupon rate was 10%? So 0 0.1. What if the discount rate was also 10%? So 0 0.1. What if the time period was five years, corresponding to what we have here? And the periodicity was equal to twice a year. Okay, so the present value of the bond here in this instance would be a thousand which corresponds to the value that we have here, and that's what we would expect. To get the duration, 
using the function I have here. And we'll look at the this duration for formal in a moment. Using that function that I've written in, when I take these values again, pull across, I get 4.0539. So let's round a little bit differently, give it Okay, but of course I've got to also make this explicit. So equal to 4053 divided by 1000 here. And that's 40539. 40539. Can we go a little bit more? Just to. Okay, 9108. Four. Okay, so we're getting uh, the same result. Again, how did we manually work out the du duration here? Well, the question we posed was, what is the duration of a five-year treasury bond with a 10% semi-annual coupon selling at par? So if you like what we have, let's just edit, copy, and paste and edit paste special just a picture fine okay so we're asking this question so we're asking this question what is the duration of a five-year treasury bond with a 10 percent semi-annual coupon selling at par so we're basically taking each of the time periods breaking them down separately taking the coupon structure and the face, discounting at each of the respective uh, at 10% semi-annually. So that's 10% divided by two to the power of the time period but again, multiplied again by two. And then when we pay, take the product of those, we get present values of those cash flows. When we sum, we get the power, we recovered as expected the power value of the bond. Uh, when we take each of those discounted cash flows and multiply by the respective time period, six months, by the present value of the cash flow, we get 2381 and so on all the way. When we take the ratio of the sum of these and the present value of the bond, the ratio of those two values is equal to what's known as the duration. Uh, here we get the same value using this function, but this function makes use of the loop structure we had before. So in the previous video we looked at how we set up a loop in our to estimate the present value of a bond. Here we estimate the duration by first of all we work out the coupon and then we estimate if you like the um, value of the discount of the face. So the face is 1000 and we discounted 1 plus r divided by m to the power of, of m by t and that fake price then gets shifted over here and the loop estimates the present value of the coupon but the initial value for the price is the discounted value for the face so when we take the sum of these in this bucket of the price bucket here ultimately what will emerge is the value of the bond. Likewise, we do the same for the, uh, if you like, the product of the time period with respect, respect of discounted uh, cash flow. And that value collects in this bucket in a similar way. 
and then the, the race was Zurich.